So we just wrapped up, we learned the flux rule that the EMF um, is just negative the change in magnetic flux over time um, when, we when we're moving wires and we have a constant magnetic field. So we haven't talked about changing magnetic fields yet. Okay, we're not, we're not quite to Faraday's law yet. Okay, and there's this example that he gives where using the flux rule will not help you solve the problem. Okay, so basically it works like this. So you have basically a spindle that's uh, spinning around and then you connect up um, through some ingenious engineering kind of two little things that are not connected but they're, they're touching but it, you know it's, it's kind of a spring thing. It's a sliding contact is what he calls it. Okay, and this thing is spinning around uh, doing its business and there's a magnetic field pointing straight up um, all throughout the thing. And the question is what is the EMF due to magnetic flux? And it looks like the um, the flux isn't changing over time. Okay. Um, but the 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 answer is there is an EMF that will drive the current through the loop this way. And using a simple force analysis, it, it's kind of apparent why. Well, the, the charges are moving in this direction. They're moving perpendicular, right? And so QV cross B. Well, that means you get little forces that are pointing outward. Uh, and they're like pluses, not like arrows. And so here there's a force actually pushing the charges onto that sliding contact because the, the turntable is moving. And you can calculate using, did I just spit all over the page? I did. Anyway, you can calculate um, the EMF after the loop using the force analysis, but not the flux rule. The flux rule, um, you'd have to kind of bend your mind around it and think of it in a different way to make the flux rule apply. So anyway, hope that's fun to think about. Um, hope you uh, take care and have fun. Bye.